So one of the things you have to decide if you're gonna be a, convert your muscle car to an electric vehicle is if you wanna put the motor in the front, utilize a drivetrain and your existing rear end, or do you wanna modify the entire back end of your car and insert the Tesla rear end where the rear end used to be? And so watch us today as we contemplate this idea. And I got a secret is I so want the Tesla rear end. I wanna go full on Tesla rear end, but we're building this car together and maybe we get there, maybe we don't. You're gonna have to wait and see. You wanna walk us through Dan? Yeah, so, so thinking about kind of what we need to do, uh, breaking it down into kind of different categories, you know, we got to do with the car, what we got to do mechanically, uh, suspension, brakes, transmission, um, and all that kind of stuff first, and then we've got to work on the 12 volt electrical system lights, uh, interior of the car, exterior of the car, what do we want it to look like, and Pat, you had some good ideas on that one. Um, and then moving into uh, the electrical aspect of it, uh, the EV, uh, the Tesla, we talked a little bit about the Tesla rear end and what that would encompass, and while it might save us some money, it might cost us more in time and in a couple of other areas, especially mod overall modifications of the car. Modifications to the rear end. Yeah, right? we, which could be a, a delay for us. And kind of divvy up the different pieces of work uh, and go after go after those aspects of it. And, and we can then, you know, we also talked about for each of those areas, kind of building a, a, a parts list or a build material bomb for, for, you know, say, get a kit for the interior of the car, get a, get a list of things for the mechanical aspects of the car, for the outside of the car, for the EV part of the car, um, and uh, the, the non, the 12 volt part of the car, heater, air conditioning, power steering, power brakes, and decide on what we wanted to do there. and then. We can all, I think we've all been kind of doing a little bit of research and so now it's like we start building those lists and bringing those things together and again then we can divvy up and go after them. Yeah. I think the first decision we have to make is Tesla rear end or no rear end because every, literally every other decision is, sits is on that because where the motor is determines the batteries, that determines what front end we put in. You know, if the motor's in the front, then we've got to consider the different front end. So, um, should I walk you? Do we know the measurements of a Tesla rear end? It, uh, yes. I, yeah. I, what did I say, 62 inches 62. is the wheel track. I don't yeah. have any of the other measurements yeah. uh, on, on where the suspension sits yeah. uh, and where the disc brakes. Let, let, let me show you, let me show you my thought here. You. You can man the camera. Let me show you this. So here's what we discovered yesterday. We jacked, we jacked the car up. And if you, if you look here, so the, the subframe rail runs right here, right? It runs right through here. That runs right across here. So that's, this is the structure of the car. The Tesla motor literally sits right here, and the shock towers are, are up in here, in this section. So if we were to do the Tesla, we would literally cut back all the sheet metal, frame up a new subframe that comes up and down, back, basically back here into where the back seat is, cut out, again, take out all the sheet metal, Get it all solid, we would have a brace going across the subframe here, and one here, and then, um, um, and then bring the Tesla motor inside and then weld up the shock towers and all that, and then cut away the old frame, right? Exactly the same way Brian did his, his, uh, his Monty. So, now here's the funny thing, is it would actually save us money because I did the math last night on buying 
This has this this gear ratio is a 283 on the rear end, which is way too low. Like if we want a golf cart, a 283 is a great rear cool. end. And we also have a four lug bolts and drums. So we want disc, we want five lugs. Um, we want matching five lugs up front to the back so we can buy wheels off the, you know, not have to order custom wheels with different lug patterns front and rear. A rear end with, that's like a three, a 340 rear end, which is real high gear ratio or, a, uh, you know, like a 320 plus disc brakes. Um, the, it's like 1100 box on the low end, right? You know, it could go up to 1800. Then you got to add in, do you change out for, go from leaf springs to four link? That's another 1400 bucks. So now you're at 2400 just in rear end parts. Um, and then you still have fat costs because you still have to weld that stuff on and do all that other stuff that, that, that you have to do. And then we'd still have to order a drive shaft too, which is going to be, you know, well, not, not with the Tesla. You don't need a drive shaft. No, no, I'm saying with the with the with the rear end four right. link, you would have to order all that. Right. So, so and the and a trans and a transmission if we. Yeah, and I think here's the other problem that we run into is if we do the non-Tesla motor where we just adapt it to the car. Yeah, I think it's easier for us to say we have parts that we can sell you if you want to adapt your Mustang without chopping it up. But on the other end, when you're at the car shows, it's not nearly as cool as saying, popping the trunk and having the Tesla rear end back there. So this is why it's like, this is like a really important decision that we have to make because it determines how cool the car is, one. Like what do people perceive as cool? What do we think is cool? What do we want to drive? What do we want to be seen in? Um, so it determines that, and two, it determines the parts that we have to sell later. Because how many people are going to chop their Mustang up? Like literally, we're going to back half this Mustang. Right. <laughs> so, and <clears throat> that is, that is, with doing the Tesla rear end, that's my concern. One, this is not the ideal car to do that to because it's a unibody. True. Well, so, all Mustangs are, right? Right. But, so your fab time and fab work and cutting this entire rear end out is going to chew up a lot of time and calculations and that's going to be a lot of work to to modify this whole rear end to, to accommodate that structure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And a lot of risk, because you screw it up, you wasted and, an entire car. And you talk out a car. You, right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. And the other thought was, right, like if we were going to do this, it's, it, it's kind of, okay, if you're going to chop a car up, this is a good car to chop up. Because if you fuck it up, you fucked it up. But on the other hand, if you're going to invest 150 hours of labor into the back end of a car, this isn't the car you're going to get your labor back out of. Right? Right. Like you're just burning cash, burning time. Right, right. Because it's not going to be worth it. It's not going to be worth, you know, $150,000 when it's done. So... I don't think it's necessarily a really, I mean, obviously people have been modifying rear ends and Mustangs for, for drag racing for years. It's not like it's not possible. It, it is risky, for sure. Well, I, I'm not saying I hate the concept of it, but I don't, I don't like it on this car. Um, because of the car that it is. Yeah. Well, and I, I think the other aspect of it is as we are developing our product, yeah. if we go with the motor up front, 
we will probably end up doing more of those conversions as projects than swapping out rear ends. Well, it, and that's the thing is that if we do this with the rear end, it's not a conversion. It's a custom car. It's mm -hmm. a custom car, right. We go with the motor up front. It's a, a conversion. You can do it on what you already got. And you can swap it back. And you can put it back if you hate it. You can put it back.